Yay, we've made it to Heathrow. Uh, we're a day early. We fly 9.40 tomorrow morning, so uh, Friday morning. Um, and we are in Heathrow. We have parked in the short stay car park. Um, the parking was cheap. Oh, well, it was about £10 more expensive, actually, in the short stay. But for coming home and being able to just come out the terminal into our car, it was worth it. Um, driving back and... Yeah, we're really gonna get like the train here. Social, um, social, public transport. Social transport, that's not good. I use public transport all the time. I'm not being funny about giggles. <laughs> I got my head around social media and public transport. We were gonna come here with public transport, but then we thought, do you know what? No, let's like not up the risk of catching COVID um, before our nice holiday. So we are here, we have driven here, we have parked in the short stay car park. We are now going to check in in our hotel for the night. And then we are going to, this early evening, go and sort out our COVID tests for fit to fly tests. Of which I will vlog as well for you to see all the... Um, all the extra bits and pieces involved with international travel to the USA at the moment. Uh, it's our first time. Well, it's Dave's first time to the USA. It's my second time, but my first time was for work. It was a work conference in Kansas City and then a hospital site visit in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, so, like, it was work. It wasn't a holiday, so I don't really class it. So it's my first time for leisure in the USA. Uh, yeah, we're excited. But when we get to the hotel... I'm going to film more about everything, all the paperwork I've had to do. Um, and granted, that is just for me, for travelling tomorrow. Do keep your own um, eye on rules changing. Contact your travel agent and everything about your details when you are specifically travelling. But I will show you the things that I had to do for our travel. Um, out of interest, because it would have interested me to see someone's movie, um, movie, see someone's YouTube um film about that so i will show you and i'll film in the hotel we're going on holiday <laughs> now we're heading underground to get the train to terminal two and three which is where we're staying tonight on an on-site <laughs> even the head of fleet can't get his train to stop for him <laughs> bye bye train Piccadilly line is much faster and more regular, but no, we have to get this. And here's the Hilton Garden Inn, Terminal 2. Right, so here, yeah. Hilton Garden Inn, Terminal 2, Heathrow Airport right for our room and it's all clean stay covid let's have a look Ooh. oh very nice thank you Sorry. oh this will do nice clean bed big bed i'm liking all the plugs and usbs by the bed <laughs> and then here oh wow you probably can just see me. You can see the sunshine. Spoilt with that sunshine. A lot of flashy lights down here. But of the orange variety. Not blue. And a runway view. This is insane. This is Heathrow Airport in London. And there was one plane taxiing on this runway. Like, that's insane. So hopefully we'll see some aeroplanes take off. Charlotte from um, Princess Cruises has taken off earlier, but I don't I think she's long gone. <laughs> we're following slowly behind. I can see Terminal 5, where we're flying from, over woo, there. Wow, that view is good, hey, Dave? Nice chair and table there. A safe by the um, bedside. Phone. Look at that, one USB and two plugs, happy with that. Something to scan there, scan me. Do that later, see what it is. 
a light, lots of very plump pillows. I love the colours, the grey and the blue and the brown. It's beautiful. I don't need to hide in the toilet, Dave. You can come out and go behind me. <laughs> What's more here? The light alcohol hand wipes. That's good. Another set of plugs. Coffee, tea making facilities. A little mini bar there if you've brought anything with you. Nice desk, nice chair. Waste paper bin. Huge TV. That's almost the size of ours at home. Oh, all you can see is the bed in it though. Um, so Dave's side of the bed has two plugs, USB as well, and there's something down there. Another plug. Uh, Aircon. Little wardrobe. Marble bottom. Perish. That's nice. You don't need much if you're in an airport the night before. Hair dryer. Mirror behind me there, full length mirror, but you'll only see me in it, you don't want to see me. Oops, press stop by mistake. This is nice. Huge mirror with me. <laughs> um, towels. Smellies. Razor points. Shaver points. Nice big shower. Oh, it's got a rainfall like shower as well. Toilet. Random piece of artwork. Looks nice. Yeah, this looks good. You can see that we are in the side that has one-way views here. Um, nearly upgraded to this one, which is a junior suite, but it was 40 quid more and literally it just had like a sectioned off area that had a sofa bed in as well as your main bed. So it wasn't worth the extra cost. Yeah, security lock thing there. Happy with this, are you? Yeah. Right, so we, I'm outside, so my mouth doesn't need to be over my mouth, it's any day of near me. Uh, we are, oh, it's a beautiful sunset here. Um, we are at the Radisson Bluff uh, Heathrow on the perimeter road. We got the local TfL bus here. And a lovely lady, bless her, she heard us talking and me going, oh, well, this is the road we need to get off at. And she told us which stop to get off at. It's very kind of her. Um, we were okay. I had it on my phone. But it's very nice. And people are very lovely, generally. Um, so we're very grateful for her eavesdropping and helping us, bless her. Um, not eavesdropping. We weren't particularly quiet. <laughs> um, but yeah. So we're going to the hotel. In the hotel's car park, there is the Randox testing tent. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it's there. We're going to go and get our fit to fly test. So it's looking promising that we're in the right place. There's a sample drop box here for Randox Health. Um, outside the Radisson Bluff. So I had tried to book this hotel and there was no availability. And I was like, oh my God, how can it be full? Turns out it's not full, it's shut. Which is really sad. Hopefully, you know, in the future when more people travel and use Heathrow, it'll open again. So we're walking down this dark road at the side of the hotel. There's a McDonald's there and just the road which if you're traveling on your own is probably a little bit intimidating <laughs> um seems to be a residential area but i've got him <laughs> um so there's two of us for company it doesn't feel so intimidating walking down a random dark alley <laughs> here we are a tent in a random hotel car park but um this is where we get our test to say we can fly yeah, I'll let you know what it's like. I won't film inside, but um, I shall let you know how we do. It's only for a um, lateral flow. We're all tested. We're both negative. We're just on an escalator. Just going to find a little shop in arrivals in Terminal 2, the Queen's Terminal. And then we're going to head to our hotel. And I think there's a link bridge to our hotel from the terminal here. Um, yeah, now everything's done. We just need to check in. Um, which we'll do. I'll, I've got my laptop, we'll do it when we get back to the hotel room. Um, but yeah, I'll do a little vlog when I get back to the hotel of everything we've had to do. Um, so it's quite a lot, but it's worth it to go on holiday. <laughs> We're back at the hotel. All negative, all checked, all ready to check in. 
all ready to sleep. The little covered walkway. It's cold. Hi, it's Lois, no cruise control. Um, I am in the Hilton Garden in Heathrow Terminal 2 and 3 Hotel. We're staying here the night before our flight out to Miami to get on Sky Princess. So I'm showing you a bit about going around. I thought I'd do just a little chatty bit on this vlog, just to chat through what we did, um, all the new paperwork. Um, so most importantly, and what I forgot on some Insta stories. So if you go to my Instagram account, I've, um, I've saved some Insta stories there about what we, I say we, I did it. Um, what I did for both of us in order for us to travel safely and properly um, to the US from the UK. Um, so it's very specific. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of you that watch, bless you, are from all over the world and thank you. This is specifically UK to US. The first most important thing that I forgot on the Instagram story and did last is travel insurance. So we have travel insurance booked. We um, have booked, we have travel insurance. Um, we've had it since, well, we always have an annual travel insurance thing, but obviously 2020, there was no, no travel. So we didn't have it for that. But then in 2021, when cruising started again in May, we had travel insurance. Um, even with those British cruises, because you still need travel insurance. Um, so we have travel insurance for cover for you, who are underwritten by... Uh, Quite a big, um, I can't remember who the company that it's underwritten with, but it's a big company. Let me have a look and see if it says in here. Is it N Enslin or something like that? Um, but basically it's cover for you because they were recommended by someone um, because they did really nice. You know when you have to go on the British cruises, and you had to have a letter to show that you were covered for COVID. Um, they did really clear letters um, for that. And, and the, 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 um, the product seemed good as well. So it's AXA. Um, they're with part of AXA um, insurance. So yeah, so we have a couple insurance policy uh, for the year and we have cruise cover added on to that an excess waiver so we don't have any excess and travel disruption disruption cover and covid cover and travel to the us cover um yeah do we covered another nice little letter that says i think we covered up to 15 million pounds if we contract covid whilst abroad um yeah. So yeah, we've we've got travel insurance. You would be very unwise to travel without travel insurance. Even um holidays like the, the staycation cruises, do you know? Like if you did that without travel insurance, then you were lucky if you didn't need to claim. Um the next thing we needed to do, so basically BA, which I show on my um Insta stories and I'll put up a Thing here do a really good like ready reckoner kind of thing where you put in the country you're going to the country you're leaving and whether you're vaccinated or not and it gives you like um guidance really of what you need to do um but take everything i say here as what i had to do um and for your interest because the guidance is constantly changing and don't go by what i say just take this as interest um, you need to check your government's website, you need to check your travel um, company, you know, the cruise line, the the airline, the hotel, um, their guidance and what they want. And you, this is a good time to book with a travel agent or travel advisor because they will know as well. It's part of their job really to keep up with all this. So then you have your own sort of expert to help you through all this ultimately you know you've got access to the government websites you can google it you you know it's your you're booking the holiday it's your responsibility to know what you need to do to travel to certain countries so 
we also needed an ESTA. So, you know, to go to other countries generally you think, oh, I might need a visa. So with America, they have like a agreement with the UK that you can apply for an electronic system for travel authorization. I'm reading off my, my ETSA. Uh, ESTA, rather. I keep saying ETSA. It's ESTA. Um, so it's like a um, visa waiver, but it's an agreement. So you have to apply for it. There's a lot of detail you had to put in it, to be fair. Um, so passport, but then you had to put things like your employer, um, even your social media channels that like you had to put on there. And basically, I think they're looking just to check that you're not trying to come in the US, the back door and hang around and not leave, which clearly we are not doing. We're going on holiday and we are returning. So this ETSA, e ESTA, is for business or leisure travel. I remember having to do one when I, well, I've only been to the US once before and that was for work um, and I had to do one for that. So when you do it, there's quite a few questions to fill in, quite in depth. Um, it doesn't take too long though, don't worry. Um, you also have to scan parts of your passport and oh, it did not like that. It took about 10 goes, so do bear with it and it will eventually be okay. Um, you have to pay $14, which actually is not too bad. I think that's something like, I don't know, £9, £10. Um, you then, so this is all done on the US Customs and Border Protection website. Um, and then you can check the status of it. I did it on, I think like a Saturday or Sunday, um, and it went through really quickly in about two or three hours. And then you get an email like notification to tell you that it's been okayed and you get this email that gives you payment receipt and authorization approved. And then it's like, have a nice trip. Welcome to the United States. Um, and it's valid for a year. So for $14, it's good really. So I think I completed that for me and pasted for Dave. Um, just going through my little file here. So I've got the Atoll certificates printed off that Emma Otter um, travel um, booked our cruise and our flights for us. It's a bit of a last minute booking because we were supposed to be on MSC Seashore embarking on Saturday too, um, but from Miami rather than Fort Lauderdale. Um, but there were countries on the red list when it came around to paying the balance and we were doing two weeks in the yacht club so it was a large balance that we were not prepared to pay for then not to potentially travel um and yes and our travel insurance would have been another void as well booking when we were booking against government advice so unfortunately we lost that deposit because msc or msc <laughs> um but in the great scheme of things uh it was a risk we couldn't take. We couldn't risk being two weeks in quarantine. Um, yeah, so, you know, you live and you learn. Um, and, yeah, so we then looked at other trips and actually Sky Princess was going and was exactly the same date. So it worked perfectly and we didn't have to change our flights. We changed our hotel. Emma helped us with that. We did have a hotel booked in Miami. Um, but we changed that to Fort Lauderdale. Lawn, Law, Lauderdale. I'm not saying that wrong. Um, yeah, so flights are the same, BA flights, and then we are now on Sky Princess instead of Seashore. Uh, so I've got lots of information that Emma's given us. So I've got like emergency phone numbers and stuff for travel advisors. Excuse me. I've got an accommodation voucher for our hotel tomorrow. Um, Got the princess check-in stuff. So here, right, back to the COVID travel to the US stuff. So we have both our COVID vaccinations. So we're both double vaccinated and boosted. Um, and we've got our passes of that. We've also got them on our phones. Um, so if anyone needs to see them, we've got them. Um, we were able, so with, um, with BA, so our flights with BA, we, I had to book COVID tests to take um, to be fit to fly. And I did these with Randox because they had a results within an hour test um, in Heathrow. So booked those, 
booked a particular time appointment as well and they were in the Randox tent for testing which is in the um, car park of the Radisson Blur Hotel on the perimeter road of Heathrow. Um, so we came to Heathrow, we parked, I have parking in the short stay car park which was really good well good value we wanted to come safely and not have risk of catching covid on the way so we drove here um and parked in terminal five because that's where we're coming back was well, where we're flying from tomorrow and where we're coming back from despite staying in the hotel in terminal two um we so the the parking short stay was 10 pound more than long stay so for the convenience of not having to fare for the bus and luggage we went for short stay all seems um, good so far. We'll see when we get home <laughs> if it's um, not been double charged or anything. So that all seems good. We then came to this hotel um, and checked in. It's a terminal hotel, so I wanted to have the least travel as possible in the morning. Um, we just need to go down and get on the the um, underground or my husband's line um to get to terminal five to check in well we checked in but to get our baggage checked in and our passports checked back to covid so came to the hotel dropped our luggage and then um rested for a bit and then went to get our covid tests done so i had paperwork we had to take with our um appointment details and the booking initially of it with the you know reference number and stuff We'd had to download a Randox app on our phones and we'd had to register our passports in that and other such stuff. Um, and then we, so we got the bus from Heathrow Central. So I used the London bus app to see which buses to get. And there was like an option of four different buses that leave Heathrow Central and the local bus um, um, station. We very kind lady overheard us talking about the road that we needed to get off at and she was like oh I'm getting off there I'll tell you and I was like oh bless us it's very very nice of her people are very lovely um I think we would have been all right without her but it was very nice to have the reassurance and her to be like this is where you get off we were very grateful for her um we then potted round to the testing thing we'd gone there really early because i didn't want to be late because the test depends whether we get to fly and go on a holiday um so we wandered around and the people were very kind and, and checked us in there and then and could do the test then so we were about an hour early um but they were quiet so they let us do the tests so they took reference numbers and stuff from us and took the appointment details and then we went to the different sort of pods to get tested the healthcare professional did the test, um, it's a nasal swab only, and then it was a lateral flow that they were doing there and then, and then they would be, you can leave now, you'll get emailed the results. So we need the results. So in the lateral flow, we can easily do it ourselves, but we need the specific results on a um, formal certificate, which, you know, these um, companies are used to doing now, it's a formal certificate with like your passport details on, your name on, your date of birth on, the um, registration and um, address of the, the company that are doing it for you and the laboratory and everything. So it needs to be really official like that for the travel. So we had those emailed to us. Um, they came through really quickly within about, I don't know, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> we then, luckily they were both negative, which is great. We then were able to do, so BA wouldn't let us check in online until we'd followed through information, put, putting in the information of these tests and such like in our vaccines on their Verify app, app. So the Verify app, I think, is an independent company away from BA, but BA used them to check through all of our documents to check that we're safe to fly. So the Verify, Verify app, um it was straightforward ba i think had sent us a message or an email each saying that we needed to do it a few days ago because i hadn't known about it until then so we filled it in as best we could and then we couldn't fill in bits bits of it until we'd had the test so you need to fill in your vaccine status and we did it on our phones and were able to um upload the vaccine passport um we then had 
So they were unable to upload the, the certificate of the negative test. And then I think it was something else. Oh, I think you had to just write like declarations that you you hadn't had COVID symptoms and um, such like that. And then that was, yeah, there was a few declarations, I think, of things, you know, that you hadn't been in contact with people with COVID knowingly without PPE. Um, you hadn't um, had COVID. You hadn't been in contact with someone with confirmed COVID. There were a few confirmations you had to confirm and then like electronically sign. And then after that, you had like a notification come up that you were ready to fly um, or ready to travel and then BA let you check in. So then we checked in on BA um, and then we came back to the hotel here and are relaxing knowing that our tests are negative. Um, we also, so the test that we've done, because it's within 48 hours of sailing, we can use it to get on Sky Princess as well. Um, and we have it electronic copies of that. We have because we're in the airport since we had that, we haven't been able to print that. Hopefully that will be all right. Um we what else do we have? So we oh and I've also so no longer do you need to test in the country you're in before you come back to the UK because we're Plague Island and we're all with COVID. Um so that test is not needed to be done anymore. However, I have two of those tests, just in case the airline wants them. So I'm like, maybe Britain doesn't anymore, but the BA might. Um, I'm pretty sure we would have found out in another way if they do, but I have it just in case. Um, and then we have some of our own lateral flows to do in case we're symptomatic, um, which obviously we would inform the medical team on board of as well if we are. Um, we, what else? Ah, day two return to the UK um, test, so I have them booked. We have, so they're only lateral flows now for the UK, and you don't need to, well, I say all this, we're going away for, well, just over two weeks, so it may all change whilst we're away, but we have Sky Prince, oh, we have Princess Plus, rather, and have Wi-Fi access, so I'll be half keeping an eye on the changes. I think the changes have changed overnight, overnight just now in a few hours like the self-isolation in the UK is now five days instead of seven um so things change quickly um but at the moment we all have to do a two-day day two return to the UK lateral flow um we can do it as soon as we land though so I have one each of those for us and then on booking those we got given passenger location form numbers which I will then I've got my laptop with me just in case we get stuck up there and I need to work out there. So we'll be able to do my passenger locator forms on my laptop. We'll be able to do it on a phone or an iPad either as well. Um, and then I have the numbers to put on for that. So we'll see. I think all the paperwork is done. But um, yeah, I mean, take it all a pinch of salt. You know, you need to really take responsibility for your travel and decide you know find out what needs doing but for interest and for um for giving you a insight really into travel to the us at the moment this is what i've had to do um yeah hopefully in the morning we'll be on a flight to miami i mean the only thing stopping us now is if anything happens with ba hopefully not um yeah so i'll continue my vlog series you will hopefully have an embark well It'll probably be my Miami, um, welcome to Miami <laughs> um, vlog next. And then there'll be an embarkation one, um, the following vlog after that. So these will be registering on my, going live on my YouTube channel um, from the beginning-ish of February. And there's going to be quite a few of them. <laughs> so I'd imagine they'll cover until... I go on Valiant Lady in March. Um, so, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you want to follow my cruising adventures. Um, and yeah, any questions, anything, ask in the comments and I will answer um, as soon as I can. 
if I know the answer. If not, I will let you know. I don't know, but point you in the direction of somewhere to find out. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for the, the support. <laughs>